I'm scared well, to hold this. What's this? Yo, Ambrose is like a bomb, yo. I hold got, it. I got clammy hands. I don't. Oh man. <laughs> Yo, what's going on everybody? So we have been hitting up streetwear scenes in every city on this Asia tour and today we are in Hong Kong and it is no different. Hong Kong is world renowned for shopping. You can go to Fashion Walk and find Babe, Off-White, Nike Lab, CDG, Juice, you name it, they have it out here. But today we're with our Hong Kong Connect, Ambrose, who worked with Hypebeast and High Stability and he's about to show us some spots that you might have missed. What up guys, this is Ambrose. We're about to dive deep in the streetwear scene and we're gonna show you some stores that are hard to find. You guys ready? We're out in Hong Kong in the Kowloon side. Let's go. All right, Ambrose, what's the first stop on the streetwear crawl and why are we in a mall that's only selling cell phones? Our first stop is Hello Yeah store, and the reason why it's in the cell phone mall, it's not because it's, they sell cell phones, but it's because the rent is cheaper, and one of the main factors in Hong Kong that will make or break you is if you can pay rent each month. So you're saying there's been other stores that kind of start off in smaller malls like this and branched off to much larger locations? Oh, most definitely. I mean, this is where they build their clientele, their following, and so they can take it to, say, like a ground floor, or your Causeway Bays, or your Centrals. So this uh, Sintat Plaza is essentially proving grounds. Yeah. And more, more or less. Yo, let's check it out. All right, yo, we're here with the owner, Kenneth. Yo, Kenneth, nice to meet you, man. So what's the deal with your store? Like, what's your focus and, and what what made you want to open up here? Uh, our focus is a very up and coming streetwear brand. So we want to make a very up and coming and a very good history and culture to bring to Hong Kong and a lot of Asian people. He has up and coming brands he wants to introduce to the Hong Kong market, but at the same time, he's carrying like a lot of the OG brands that kind of are already a staple like back home for you that maybe the younger audience didn't grow up with. So it's also like an education thing as well. How do you actually choose and curate what you're picking? Because I, I recognize a lot of these brands and a lot of brands back home. One, he said he wants to find brands that are making a lot of noise, whether it be online or Instagram. Uh, social media. Yeah. Yo, right now, man, I think we gotta look at some of these pieces and talk about some of the brands that we have not covered on this Asia trip so far. Yo, Ambrose, what's the deal with this brand, Carrots, man? I've been kind of seeing it around. So yeah, you'll, this was founded in New Jersey by a guy named Anwar Carrots, and you can really tell, well, that's because his name's Carrots, but a lot of his motifs and designs always feature small little, well, they spell out Carrots, but oh, you also right see, like, yeah, exactly. So it's kind of play on his name and at the same time, the graphic. What do you think about it personally, like about like the messaging or like, I mean, it's just carrots. I guess it's it's literally spelled like the vegetable, so. And it's, it's, it's almost similar color to a carrot. Exactly. So, I mean, I'd say it's a very playful kind of brand. Thing. It's a very playful brand. Cause even uh, they'll have this embroidery all over and yeah. uh, I think they do a good job just kind of just playing their lane. So this is the pleasures rack. I enjoy this brand because they're so graphic heavy. It almost like streetwear went back to just printing it. How do you feel about it being in the streetwear game for so long? The mid 2000s, it was all over prints, large graphics, street stuff like guns, money, and now it's just simple uh, bringing back a lot of the old typefaces and stuff. So going back, I guess, more design centric. Maybe there's, I feel like it's almost coming back to this. What's this brand right here? This is f***ing Rabbits or FR2 to be more like PG-13. Okay, we'll just say FR2 for the sake of this video. Yeah, so again, it's a lot of in-your-face statements, uh, graphics. Where would you put this brand? Definitely closer to what you're seeing around. So it fits in lower price point, uh, easy to wear. Yo, really randomly, we got our friend Fubi from Babe Eyewear coming through. What else do we have? Yo, these are dope, man. All right. Good seeing you, man. All right, now to finish up at Hello Yeah, let's go pick out a couple pieces. Yo, Kenneth, thank you so yes. much for the shirts, man. I appreciate it. Yo, good looking out, and uh, let's wear these out of the store. Yo, Ambrose, where we at right now? We're at Soul Attic. Anyone that's kind of a sneakerhead in Hong Kong knows this spot for sure. Yo, this spot looks crazy. I already see some exclusive items that I'm really dying to check out. Yo, let's take a quick look. Yo, I would say I, I don't see a lot of shops. I really don't see a lot of shops whose 
putting the boxes yeah. all the way up there, you know. He doesn't have the space for it. All right, guys, so we're already in Soul Attic right now. The craziest item I've already seen, right up top. Remark, holy grail, one out of 72, undefeated Jordan 4s. Woo! Price point, X, 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 X. These are the kind of books. These are the only, there's a, you can only find pictures of them on Google. They're I've actually, dead stock. I've actually, these are dead stock, I've man. never seen these in person. I think Hold they're on. my size. A, B. I could kind of fit them. All right, AB, I gotta, I gotta get you out of here, man, before you, before you make a brash decision. Oh, my Bitcoin money I just came up too. <laughs> Wu Tang, Whoa. don't touch the photo. Oh, I won't touch it at no, all. Just, you can touch it. Just hold the meat so good. Oh, wow. He, just let he me said, touch don't them. even touch the leather. We gotta show the goods, man. We have to show the goods. We, we ain't yeah. cover sneakers that much when we're on tour. Oh man. And a shop like this is very rare to find. Sneakers is funny. Like Hong Kong is funny because there'll be trends that don't make it anywhere else. The Asian market is different, yeah. but you know what? I just know the Asian market, we're on Jordans from the start. All right, man, it's so special coming into a place like this. It's like, kind of like stepping into a time machine, going back in time. You bring back a lot of childhood memories if you collect the shoes back then. Ambrose. Where are we in? Where are we at right now? We're in extensive publicity. They started off around the corner, and now we're in this huge space. And with us today, we got the store director. We got Dino. What's up, guys? All right, Dino. So you guys just moved into this big spot about a month ago. Yep. How did you guys go from a little store to a big store? We just wanted something different to the sneaker culture for Hong Kong, and it was kind of, you know, boring. And we wanted something more unique, more like American style. So we started the extensive publicity right here. What would you say is so American about this style? Is it the basketball hoop? The basketball the hoop, court? the cords, the product that we carry. Uh -huh. uh, it's more about street fashions and everything. Uh -huh. And we have some really cool sneakers. I'll show you guys later. And I noticed that you guys actually have a lot of bare bricks here. Yes, we do. Okay. Maybe uh, one of the most in, in Hong Kong that I've seen. What made you guys specialize in the Metalcom bare bricks? Me and my partner, we actually think that bare bricks comes into the hype as well. It's one of the most hyped up toys. Beside the bare bricks, we actually are going to get a lot more designer toys. Would you guys agree that the bare bricks when it comes to streetwear, they're like the statues of streetwear. I feel like streetwear in general is a very collectible culture. All right, well, let's take a look around the store. Dino, what's up? How much has uh, the sneaker game changed in Hong Kong? I know it's always been big out here. How much do you think it's changed over the years, maybe the past five years? I mean, the game definitely has changed. Like when we used to focus on Nike, like the SBs, like the Jordans and everything. When Kanye signed with Adidas, when the new Easy came out, yeah. like it changes everything. So one of the craziest things about this new location is they have their very own VIP room. Yo, can we go inside? Yes, you can. You get my permission. Oh! Man, we need security clearance. This is the clubhouse. Yo, what's going on in this VIP room, man? So basically, you know, if you're like a VIP to us, like loyal customers and people like that, we can have a variety of antique supreme, some really hard to find grails mm -hmm. for you to choose from to purchase in this room. That's definitely another unique feature that they have here, guys. I would say one of the larger stores that I've seen with just a huge collection of different items. I saw some Mitchell Ness, I saw some Supreme, I saw some Medicom, and definitely a lot of rare sneakers. Yo, AB! I saw these on the top shelf, man, and I was like, they have both of the shady, slim, shady Jordan 4s. This one's even autographed, the blue one. Ooh. They're so rare. I rarely see them together, and they have more than one pair of these. I would say not many stores have this. And you know, coming from Seattle, uh, we wear a lot of North Face up there, so. That's the new one. This is nice. That just dropped this week. I just feel like standing outside in New York, just rapping. <laughs> they got a lot of heat out here in Hong Kong. Very unique, uh -huh. very like independent, and very stylish. I love the spots that we went to. I mean, we went to Hello Yeah, we went to Soul Addicts. I mean, those are like really underground spots nestled away. And then we came here in this spot, you know, recently got a whole new space and it's just turned into a whole new spectacle. So, yo, I'm ready to keep it moving though. Yes, we gotta go. Streetwear don't just stop here. There's more to see.
Rose, where are we at right now? We're in essentially a trendy zone. Everyone probably from Hong Kong knows this spot. It's basically a loop and a bunch of boutiques that sell streetwear. So essentially this is like a mixture of like streetwear, big brands that already, you know, they have status around the world. But it's also where locals will come and put their brands. So you're gonna see a lot of brands you're not familiar with and it's just like local brands putting their work out. This, this spot, it's like an underground mall and there's like the stalls and the shops are all really small but they are selling a lot of really high-end brands and also a lot of local stuff too. One thing in Asia that never gets boring is like the intro, fascination with American culture. Mm. You know what I mean? We were in Harajuku and I feel like in Japan they do it the best where they follow like old Americana, yeah. you know, even your rugged Levi's, Dickies, like they love all that, but they kind of repurpose it and turn it into streetwear. Yo, I would say that this is a pretty cool store. I mean, the shops are small, you get in here quick, you make your loop around, you get to see a lot of stuff. I would definitely recommend you guys come here if you visit Hong Kong, trendy zone. This is where you find a lot of Stussy in Hong Kong. Yeah. It's like this mall actually has a lot of the Stussy. Some of the stores are around from 2001, and around that time, I mean, we grew up on the Stussy, right? Yeah. Undefeated, the Huffs. Would you say that these are like the classic streetwear stores, almost? Like, there are obviously bigger company ones that have way like more exclusive stuff, but as far as like your streetwear staples, like Stussy t-shirts, I feel like, you know, this area has a lot. Yes, true, like, Mong Kok has always just been that area. There is a lot of streetwear out in Hong Kong, man. I think it's safe yeah. to say. It's, this has been a hub for streetwear for a very long time. I would look at, you know, the magazines. It was Tokyo, Hong Kong. Those were the spots in Asia that were curating streetwear style. So this is Trendy Zone. A lot of young people come here. It's just like a Hong Kong staple. Next, I want to take you guys to another Hong Kong staple, Popcorn. All right. Let's go to Popcorn. It it's out. right across the street. Yo, okay, Ambrose, where we at now? So we're at another independent streetwear staple of Hong Kong called Popcorn. Yeah. And as yeah. you can see, they got a lot of stuff. Well, I like it because they got everything from Thrasher to Palace to Anti-Social Social to Carrots. They're also covering a lot of They cover a lot clothing. of demographics. Yeah. I see, I can see some stuff I would rock as an older guy, and I see like some youngins over here. They're picking out some you know newer age items. Uh, I think the selection here is pretty vast. I like it because it's kind of a mixture between a very hype store, which they have the hype items, yeah. but they also have the staples. So I think a good way to describe this is like, it's half uh, reseller and like half brands that they curate. I mean, they carry just a lot of like Vans and New Balances, you know, stuff that's not hyper exclusive, but you know, still in the game. All right, so this is one of the few stores that actually carry Palace. And you have to know they are like reselling it. Some items marked up higher, but it's pretty much at market price. Honestly, we didn't see a lot of Palace at other stores, so I think popcorn having it, you know. It's a great mixture of skate, staple brands to streetwear brands that are not too hype, but uh, Palace is one of the there. few brands that kind of are going at it with Supreme. Like Supreme would have Nike collabs, Palace would have Adidas collabs, and mm. I feel like Supreme still has, you know, the stronghold on it, but Palace is kind of making a uh, little movement. If you're gonna be in Mong Kok, I recommend coming this way. It's uh, actually closer to Yamate, but either way, it's about a 10 minute walk from the station. Definitely a shop you should check out if you're doing some shopping out in Hong Kong. All right, everybody, that wraps up our streetwear shopping video in Hong Kong, man. We got to see a lot of spots that I had not been to before. Thank you, Ambrose. Would not have been able to do it without you, man. I would have to say, this is my second time in Hong Kong. I hit up some of the more regular flagship shops that most tourists would go to, but man, you showed me like another side of the culture that I knew existed, but I didn't know where to find it. Coming out to Mongok and even seeing all the different like streetwear shops out here and you telling me about the history behind it, it's dope, man. Shout out to everybody that we met. Shout out to all the stores that we popped into. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah, if no you're problem. ever in town, let me know. I just hope you guys learned something and hopefully you guys at home have seen something that you've never seen before. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching that video. And in the comments below, let me know what are some other streetwear stores or streetwear brands that you like to shop at around the world. Until next time, we out on Kowloon side of Hong Kong. We out. Peace.
Yo, what's going on everybody? On this Asia tour, we have been hitting up streetwear scenes all over. We hit up Tokyo, we hit up Taipei, and now we are in Beijing, China in the San Li Tun Soho district. And when people think of China and streetwear, they're gonna think of knockoffs. But we're here without Beijing Connect, Jiawei. He's gonna show us the real deal. Yo, what's up? It's Jiawei, I'm from Beijing. I'm a clothing designer. And the streetwear thing in China is being huge. And today I'm gonna show you the real deal. All right, man, it's cold outside, but the buildings look cool. I seen a lot of stores, I'm really excited. Yo, I'm ready to go see streetwear in Beijing. Yeah, me too. You guys ready? I'm ready. Let's, Let's go. go. All right, guys, it's pretty live out here. They've got skaters, streetwear. Where are we at right now? We're here outside of DPG, where they sell a lot of skateboard-influenced uh, streetwear brands. Some people tend to forget that skateboarding is such a huge part of streetwear, so I'm glad they have this shop. Let's go. Let's get inside. All right, yo, this store actually has a really, really good selection of clothes. I would even say a better selection than a lot of stores in America. It'd be hard to find one store in America that actually has all these brands. You know, they'll have some of the more local brands, things you would find at the mall, but then they also have like the more unique stuff, like have a good time, that's Japanese. You don't really see that in America too often. I would say Places and Faces also. Rip and Dip, you, you kind of find it, but you know, it's not everywhere. It's not at your local malls. All right, Jiawei, here we got the Rothko pants. Tell me why these are popping right now. I think it's the rapper in the States have made it popular. Yamborghini High, right? Yeah, Yamborghini High, the ASAP map. Yeah. And Chris Wu been wearing this in the Rap of China show. Military always inspires streetwear though. So Rothko is an actual military brand? It's a military brand, yeah, for sure. Like you go to any Army Navy store back home, they'll have it. I feel like the style of how big they are, is that a little bit throwback? Throwback to, what, 90s, 2000 bagginess? Yeah. I feel like that's coming back. Shout out to people moving to more roomier jeans and roomier sizing clothing. Next brand we're gonna be talking about is Places and Faces. So this brand come from UK. So this is like a pretty cool booklet that they also have. So this is definitely in the thrasher lane. Yeah, for sure. Of where it's like, it's kind of, could be a magazine about culture and stuff, but it also has a brand attached to it. What do you think, AB? Places and Faces. Places and Faces. I need to know more about the brand first. When I rock certain clothes, just like the skater said outside, like you gotta know what they represent. Like you can't just put on these labels just because they're popular. All right, next up we got Rip and Dip and Leon Carson. Heard that even now a lot of skaters like they like Leon Carson's brand more because it's more focused on skate and Rip and Dip is not. Hey. What do you think about um, the different levels of streetwear? You know, when you come from this to even something like Stone Island, like what you're wearing right now. So when I was younger, I used to rock like really loud pieces. I used to shop at Pakistan, but now after I grew up, I had to like switch up to the comfortability and durabilities. Personally, Ab, what's your take on rip and dip and stuff like this? I actually like the way they're marketing themselves. They definitely unique, and I actually like the cat. Like, come on, killer cam cat right here. <laughs> That's pretty tight to me. Next brand we're gonna be talking about is called Have A Good Time, which is a Tokyo skateboarding brand. It's a nice little reminder, it's a good message, and you said that they've been doing a lot of collaborations. They did Metacom, mm -hmm. Bear Briggs. So, Andrew, I think you should get a hoodie like this, because it would be pretty dope for layering. You can put it underneath a bomber, and with your zipper and zip, and you have the whole message. It's, it's such a simple you. name, man. Yeah. I might, I might get something. I'm getting it. All right, Andrew, you copped yourself a new hoodie, yeah. one that you've been wanting for a while now. How's it feel? Yo, it feels good, man. I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> So the second stop is Sub Cafe. This is the must stop in San Litun area. It is like pretty much one of the most well-known Supreme resale store around Beijing. It feels like we're in a Supreme shop right now. They got a little bit of everything here, not just Supreme, but they got a lot here. 